Now anybody who watches this channel knows it's definitely possible to blow things up with huge lasers. But did you know you can actually levitate stuff with laser beams? For all my viewers out there that are laser hobbyists, this is actually a really easy experiment to perform. All you need is a marker and a fairly strong red laser. Now in theory, you can actually use any color of laser for uh, levitating particles. It's just that most burning lasers built by hobbyists tend to have trash beam specs. But if you build one from a DVD burner, then that has good enough beam quality for the project. Now this setup is actually extremely simple. So right here I have a uh, 250 milliwatt red laser diode that I paid something like $2 for on eBay and a lens in front. And then I built a 50 cent laser diode driver to power that thing. And now I take that lens in front and focus it to a tiny point that's as close to the laser as I, as I can get it. And here I let that match to show where that focal point was. So you can see it's really, really close to the laser there. Now the air has to be extremely still in order to get the levitation to work. Any sort of air current will uh, blow those particles out of the beam. But as you can tell from the uh, wind blowing the smoke around, there's a huge draft inside this storage shed that I'm using as a lab. So I won't be able to get the experiment to work here. Now in order to set up your optical trap at home, you first make sure that the air is very still around you. Now you take the uh, marker and stick the very tip of it inside the uh, focal point of that laser beam and then slowly draw it back. And now sometimes you'll see some little particles there trapped in the focal point of that beam. Now you can even move around the laser very slowly and those particles will stay trapped in that beam there. And they'll stay there indefinitely until the uh, air current knocks them out. Pretty cool. In fact, this effect has been known about for several decades now. And there's something called optical tweezers, where uh, scientists use beams of light to move around little particles like cells in front of a microscope. And there's actually a Nobel Prize awarded for this discovery. Probably the easiest to understand explanation for this effect is based on the fact that light carries momentum. Now this is actually the same property of light that might be used someday to send tiny spacecraft to nearly the speed of light and uh, buzz other stars by just hitting them with laser beams for a really long time. Now laser beams are not typically uniform across their uh, diameter. In fact, usually the center of them has the strongest intensity of light and then it tapers off towards the edges. Many times the laser beam takes on a bell curve kind of distribution. So it turns out that uh, bell curves aren't just useful for separating the stupid people from the smart people in class. It actually shows up everywhere in nature, including laser beams. Suppose I have a particle in a laser beam, and I have it so it's not in the center of the beam. That means there's more light going through one side than the other. When the light hits the particle, it gets refracted or bent. And in this particular case, there's more light going to the right side of the particle than the left. And now, because there's more light going to the right side of the particle, then there's more light getting deflected off to the left. And now in order to conserve momentum, that makes a force push the particle to the right. Now if the laser isn't focused to a fine point, it's just pointing straight, then the net force is going to always drag the particle to the uh, most intense part of the laser beam, but it's still always going to be pushing up. But if you draw out the rays for a uh, focused laser beam, you see that the uh, particle is always going to be attracted to the very center of the laser beam where it's most intense. Now if you take a look at the math behind this effect, you see that by bending the light at a stronger angle, you get more of this trapping effect. So the effect is best with materials with a high index of refraction. Now diamonds have an extremely high index of refraction. They bend light really, really strongly. So it would seem that diamonds would be a great material to levitate in a laser beam. Now I'm not the first guy to think of levitating diamonds with a laser beam. There's actually a guy by the name of Nick Vamivakas that levitates diamonds for experiments in quantum physics. And now I'm not going to do any groundbreaking experiments in quantum physics for you guys because I'm you know, doing this experiment for $20 in a storage shed in the middle of nowhere. But that being said, I am going to levitate some diamonds. I went on eBay and bought this bag of diamond powder for something like $8. So this is not an expensive experiment to perform. Here I have my diamond powder and my laser in a very still room. And now I started by trying sprinkling some of those little diamonds into the laser beam and I couldn't get any of them to stick. I was making too many air currents for that. But when I stuck the diamond powder on a piece of paper and then uh, picked up the laser and uh, put that powder in the center of the uh, focal point, I was able to pick up some of those diamonds there. And what you're seeing are actual frickin' diamonds being levitated by frickin' laser beams. Amazing. Now some of my more uh, observant viewers are going to point out that the explanation I used earlier doesn't work if the particles I'm levitating are smaller than the wavelength of the light of the laser that I'm using. And in the case of the diamonds that I'm using, that's exactly the case. So I can't use my hand wavy explanation based on momentum. Instead I've got to resort to a little bit of uh, electromagnetism. Now I'm not going to bore you with the full derivation here, but I still do want to go over a few of the important points. 
Now this derivation is based off of the one I found on Wikipedia, but the one on Wikipedia seemed to skip a lot of steps, so I went in and filled in some of my own, that way I could understand it better. So the gist of this explanation is that light is an electromagnetic wave, and uh, the particle that's floating inside the laser beam is an insulator, it's a dielectric, and it gets polarized in response to the electric field. Now we're going to assume that this uh, dipole is perfect, because it makes the math a lot easier. So then you hit it with a Lorentz force law, which is the uh, fundamental force of electromagnetism. It says how much force a charged particle will experience when it's inside of an uh, electromagnetic field. And then you hit it with a lot of math, a lot of vector calculus. And then after all this nonsense, you get a force that's proportional to the gradient and intensity in the laser beam. Now this is actually the same result that we, uh, that we got earlier using the momentum-based explanation. But it's accurate when the particles are uh, really small. For my demonstration, I used a laser that was a quarter watt and levitated a diamond that was roughly 100 nanometers across. Now if I use that same ratio to try figuring out what it takes to levitate a car that's uh, 1500 kilograms, I get a power of roughly uh, 2.55 times 10 to the 19th watts. Now that's a lot of power. And now let's say I uh, were to focus down this light to a, uh, a small spot of 0.1 uh, millimeters across. And uh, I get a power density of uh, 8 times 10 to the 26 watts per square meter. Now this actually starts to approach uh, something called the Schwinger limit, which uh, describes the intensity of a uh, laser or electric field required to uh, make particles of uh, matter and antimatter just start arising from nothing out of the vacuum, basically creating a hernia in space-time. And now that number is uh, still quite a few orders of magnitude higher, but it just shows how strong of a laser you'd actually need to uh, levitate something like a car. So I guess that's enough science for today. But be sure to check out my other videos, and also subscribe because I plan on posting a lot more videos here in the coming weeks. And uh, yeah, I guess that's about it for this video, so uh, until the next time, stay safe and happy lazing.